the International AIDS Vaccine Inst Initiative, rather. Uh, this week hosted a conference uh, really looking at uh, regional HIV vaccine awareness um, on the uh, continent, but also in the SADC region. They took, this event took place under the theme Accelerating the Path to an HIV-Free Future, Collaboration and Innovation in HIV Vaccine Research and Development. To tell us more about what came, what came out of that discussion, but also where we are really in getting closer to finding HIV vaccines and seeing an end to HIV, we are joined uh, on, on, on the line now by Mr. William Brumskeen of uh, the Orem Institute for South Africa. William, a good morning to you and thank you so much for giving us your time. Good morning and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, I think this is um, a really, yeah, this is... This is a really important discussion because I think that what we do a lot of the time is really not check in on where we are, particularly in medical research after uh, COVID-19, where pre-COVID-19, there was so much work being done in the space of HIV vaccines. Talk to us about the key points that came out of the uh, roundtable discussions on what progress has been made post-COVID-19 and really developing HIV vaccines. Well, it was a wonderful opportunity to uh, touch base with our partners um, in developing these uh, uh, type of uh, research uh, strategies towards combating HIV. Um, we were able to meet with community leaders, um, touch base with the press to show, showcase uh, the developments in uh, early phase HIV vaccine research, um, and also uh, touch base uh, with uh, specialists um, and scientists uh, to, you know, show um, what what the key uh, concepts that will be leading this uh, fight going forward. Yeah, I'm keen to hear just some of the numbers, right? Um, it, particularly where I, I remember a few years ago we started seeing uh, the trials already in parts of South Africa. I remember some trials taking place in Tembi. So where are we now with the numbers of where those trials are sitting? Um, and how much do we know about how well they work? Okay, so um, IRB, um, one of our main partners um, in, in this type of research, uh, uh, um, conducted a clinical trial called G001, um, mainly in the United States, um, and they were able to demonstrate that one of the molecules that are being researched uh, is able to basically start the process um, towards developing broadly neutralizing antibody reaction within uh, human beings. And this is sort of like a holy grail of uh, um, preventative measures uh, towards fighting HIV. Uh, this is still very early on. Um, and the whole process is sort of like shepherding, which is um, where we um, get the precursor cells, uh, prime them, and then try and give them another uh, boost towards um, developing or maturing into uh, uh, cells that can produce uh, broadly neutralizing antibodies that can fight acquisition of HIV. Mm. Um, the beautiful thing about this is that uh, um, our community in Timbisa, uh, together with another site in Rwanda, is participating in the um, trial that uh, um, um, pro um, is following on on this type of work, um, where we're trying to find out if the wonderful results that were seen in the G001 trial can be replicated in our communities. Yeah. Um, and this is because obviously uh, there's a huge genetic diversity on the globe and we want to know if uh, our genetic uh, profile is able to have the same type of reactions as our counterparts in the United States. Yeah, I think what's quite interesting is obviously the work that's being done in the research that you're talking about in Rwanda and here in Tembisa in South Africa. Um, but what I find quite fascinating is also still what's still coming, right? You've got these newly approved and recommended um, HIV prevention pipelines, if you will, right? I mean, we know about the condoms and the syringe exchange programs and even circumcision and, you know, the daily um, a, a tablet that, that uh, those living with HIV would take. But now you've got some new innovations coming in, like a vaginal ring? Yes. Um, uh, pretty recently, um, we, we uh, were blessed with the approval of the Depiverin ring, um, which is a, a vaginal ring that is impregnated with uh, a slow-release antiretroviral um, that uh, um, basically um, quotes the... Um, uh, um, the, the tissues there to prevent them from acquiring HIV. 
Um, what's of note is that the research uh, to get this uh, product where it is right now was conducted here in Sub-Saharan Africa um, and are in and around basically um, South African um, urban and peri-urban areas. Yeah, and, and uh, in development no. still? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at uh, uh, some of the work <laughs> that, you've, that you've done and some interesting things about, you know, what's still in development. And we're talking about HIV prevention, right? Um, Long-acting yes, implants. Yes. I mean, now we're getting into actually implanting things into human bodies so that they can not at all uh, be infected with HIV. I mean, what, yeah, are, what so are some of those interesting products that are coming? Um, so currently in development, in terms of efficacy trials, um, we're conducting um, a long-acting injectable um, antiretroviral um, called lenacapavir um, as part of our, uh, you know, collaboration with uh, Gilead um, to try and see if a six-month injection um, for prevention of HIV would actually be uh, workable in our populations. Um, it's something that's very promising. Also, in, uh, there's been uh, developments around a combination oral um, preventative, uh, you know, um, oral contraceptive and um, oral uh, antiretroviral that can prevent HIV and pregnancy. Um, that's uh, in, in our efficacy phase uh, trials. But in preclinical, we're looking at obviously long acting uh, implants that you've mentioned, uh, multipurpose vaginal rings, um, you know, mucosal inserts, vaginal films. Basically, basically there's a broad spectrum of. Uh, technologies that we're looking at and yeah. the whole point is to provide choice um, to individuals uh, in their path uh, trying to prevent acquisition of HIV. Uh, a few years ago in the country we we're talking about the 90-90-90 goal that we've set for ourselves right that 90 percent um, of uh, people get tested 90 percent of those who come out positive are on medication and the other 90 percent then who are on medication are undetectable great goals where are we now in terms of the goals that we set uh, for the research so at what point can we actively say that people um, will be able to go out and 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 get or get their hands on a product that prevents hiv well, there's still some, uh, 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 a lot of promise. Um, I think with the advent of uh, mRNA technology that's been worked on for the last decade or so, um, that has now um, assisted us a lot uh, in the COVID pandemic and the current um, uh, HIV vaccines also trying to make use of this technology. Uh, we hope that um, a similar uh, process that would uh, expedite our, our progress towards a, an effective vaccine um, is, is in play. Um, so we see a partnership between um, uh, our funders and also a lot of um, African scientists playing a leading role in this. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's something that we need to be proud of. Yeah. William, thank you so much for speaking to us. And we really hope you'll come back and update us on the work that's being done uh, so we can get closer and closer to an HIV-free South Africa. William Bramski in there is with the Orem Institute of South Africa.